Now we start plugging in. Uh, in order to plug in the velocity, we start by putting in our parentheses. Although in this case, the final velocity is zero. Before we plug this in, again, we put in parentheses to enclose the sign. Now the initial is plus seven. Don't forget to write the plus. I'll put parentheses in for the acceleration. Or I guess I won't. We don't really know what the acceleration is. So we're not going to plug anything in for that. We leave that as a variable. Uh, but we do need parentheses to help us plug in the displacement. So delta x is plus 15. Don't write 15. Write plus 15. OK, now we've plugged in, and we can simplify. 0 squared is 0. 7 squared is 49. After we've plugged in, we don't have to keep writing the, writing the signs down. 2 times 15 is 30. All right, now we have to continue in our quest to isolate the acceleration. What do we need to do to get the acceleration by itself? Well, we need to get rid of the 49, and we need to get rid of the 30. Um, which should we get rid of first, the 49 or the 30? Um, I hope it's clear to you that it's the 49, um, but why can't we just get rid of the 30? Well, to get rid of the 30, we'd have to divide, because the 30 is being multiplied. But if we divide everything by 30, we just get a mess. Um, because if we divide everything by 30, um, we could get rid of this 30, but then we're going to end up with 49 thirtieths. Who wants a, a weird fraction like 49 thirtieths? Um, so I hope it's clear to you that this is the wrong way to proceed. We should not try to get rid of the 30. So what I've written down right now is wrong. This is not a good way. Instead, let's show the right way. Instead, let's get rid of the 49 first. Now, remember, um, we have to do the opposite. Well, the 49 here is being added. Maybe it would actually help to put the sign here. You can see the 49 is being added to the right-hand side. So to get rid of it, you have to subtract it from both sides. So then we would end up with negative 49 equals 30 times ax. If you subtract 49 from both sides, you get negative 49 on the left, and you just get rid of the 49 on the right. That's why we were subtracting. Now we can get rid of the 30. How do we get rid of the 30? Remember, do the opposite. The 30 is being multiplied times the variable. So we need to divide. And you can see that will get rid of the 30. And the acceleration will be negative 49 divided by 30. We can use our calculator to make that into a decimal. If you do negative 49 divided by 30 on your calculator, you'll get negative 1.6. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. The threes go on forever. We could put a bar here to show that the threes are going on forever. Um, and our units are meters per second squared. All right, so please make sure that you um, include the units here. Um, now, of course, obviously here I'm not rounding off based on significant figures. So it's actually kind of silly to say this is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, because there's no way we can be so precise. On your calculator, you're going to get 1.6333, uh, and then you'd have to round that off. Uh, you might use significant figures to round that off. But as I've said, we're not covering that in these videos. This is what you get on the calculator. All right, what I want to emphasize here is thinking about the sign. Uh, what sign did we get for the acceleration? Well, the acceleration came out to be negative, and now we should check whether that makes sense. You should always check whether the sign on your answer makes sense. Is this the uh, sign we would have expected? Well, way, way back here, we'd already decided that the acceleration was going to be to the left, and we've chosen to the right as our positive direction. So yeah, this better come out to be negative. What would, what would it mean if this had come out to be positive? It would mean we screwed up. Um, so this is a very good way to check your work. Um, when you get your final answer, pay attention to the sign, and if the sign doesn't make sense, you know you made a mistake somewhere along the way. Let me say something else about that. Uh, I think some people, when they were doing this problem, they might have been tempted to just say, um, when they're plugging in, they might have been tempted to say that this is minus 2 times the acceleration, since they know the acceleration is going to be negative. That is, a lot of people might have been tempted to put a minus sign here to take into account that the acceleration is negative. Now, in a way, uh, that is, in a way, a kind of valid way to solve the problem. There is um, a, a way to solve the problem uh, based on that, but I, I don't think that's the best way for beginning students. Maybe that's a matter of taste. Um, but what I think is better is just to say that the sign of the acceleration is included in this variable. 
this variable includes its own sign, so there's no need to put another negative sign out here because the variable itself will either come out to be positive or negative. So what I mean by that is um, we put a plus sign here, and then this variable came out to be negative, and that confirmed what we knew all along, which is that the acceleration was to the left. The acceleration was negative. What would happen if you put this negative sign in here and then solved the problem? Well, then the, the variable A would come out to be positive. Um, in, in a way that makes sense because you already put the negative sign in, but I think it's a little bit better to let the variable itself include its own sign. That way you can check whether the variable comes out to be something that makes sense. Uh, I hope that made sense to you. Alright, so even though we knew the acceleration was going to be negative, that didn't mean that we put a minus sign over here. We just said, well, um, I think the acceleration is going to come out to be negative, but that negative sign is included in this variable. There's no point putting another negative sign out in front. Uh, what are the lessons from this problem? One key lesson is that when you're told that something is reversing direction, there's hidden information there. We know that in the instant that something is reversing in direction, its velocity will be zero in that instant. Um, so at the instant that we uh, reverse direction here, our velocity was zero. That was some important in hidden information in this problem. As usual, uh, I would recommend that um, if you feel that anything in this problem gave you difficulty or you learned something, before you go on, just try to redo the problem and then go on.